Hello, in this video we're going to learn how to use a new feature of Adalify which is how to detect the user's device information. Maybe are they on Android, are they on iOS, uh, what brand of phone they might be using, etc. We can get a bunch of different information. First things first, you will need to be signed up to Adalify with at least the basic plan. Um, secondly, once you're all set up with that, go to your dashboard Go to this link, API key, and then copy, uh, copy your API key, as you will need that later to set up our custom actions. And next, go to documentation. Have this open, and it will talk you through how to set up this API. Down here we've got it, detect device user agent. And you can see there are three steps to doing this. Let's get started, and you can see I've set up an app with a user login, and then a home page and a web view page. Um, we've got our three steps. Our first step is a button with a custom action and that links to the second page. Step two is a web view and step three is another button with custom action that retrieves that device data of the user. So um, let's get started on this. Um, so we're going to have a custom action and you'll want a new custom action. In my case, I've created one already, um, so I'll show you through it. Um, it's a create type, and here is our base URL. We can see all of this in our documentation. There's our endpoint, which is our base URL. Okay, the method will be post, and header authorization, which is here. We've got authorization, bearer, space, your API key. When pasting your API key, remove the space after bearer and then make the space again. Um, this will help you get around a strange bug about copying and pasting into a custom action. So let's go back. It's really as simple as that. We don't need any query parameters and we don't need a body. So let's run test request. Successful. And save custom action. Um, if you look at the database, I've made a couple of new properties, user agent ID and the update endpoint. So from that custom action here, we need to update logged in user. User agent ID will be that data.id and the update endpoint will be the data update endpoint. Okay, and final thing is to link to that web view page we've made. Step two is to put the web view URL as logged in user update endpoint. Um, now at this stage it's important that we um, preview our app and run through the process so far. You must do this before you go to step three. Okay, let's click step one. Okay, and so we should have a web view here, which will have um, opened even though it's invisible. And that should have done the trick for now. So after we've previewed, um, go to the database and go to where it saved the user agent ID. All right, that's the one we've just tested with in the previewer that just got generated. So we want to use that for our retrieve action. So let's save that. Um, and for the, um, the retrieve, um, set up a new custom action, create type, and here is your base URL. And you can get that also from the documentation. Now for the input, you need example data. And you want to copy and paste um, this one here. This is the one from our database that just got generated when we previewed the app. So make sure that is your example value. Um, have it as magic text in the base URL. The method is get and your header authorization is the same as before. So let's run the test request. Okay, so if we um, show the full response here, we can see operating system, type, brand, um, and lots of different things. So click add item. Um, on the list of responses. These are your magic text output properties. 
these are things that can be used. So um, operating system, um, is it a PC, whatever uh, piece of data that you want, um, just add them to the response there. You might want all of them, you might not, and then save custom action. All right, and once you've saved it, um, you will have the ID input thing available. So you can put logged in user, user agent ID. And of course, after that, uh, we're going to want to save some of the outputs there. So we can um, maybe have a property called operating system. Um, and let's say brand, whichever ones you want to save on the database afterwards. And then after that second uh, custom action, we can update logged in user operating system, um, device operating system, brand can be the device brand. Okay, and you can set that up for all of the data that is getting returned from there. Um, so maybe to test that, let's have that go to a new screen called device info display. And here, let's have text with the logged in user operating system and logged in user brand. All right, and let's run through the whole thing and see if it's working. There we go. You can see that it's detecting what device I'm on and returning the data so you can use it in the app. Um, now this video is really just to show you how the um, how it works, um, but of course you you would integrate this into your flow. Um, so maybe the first custom action could be part of the login button. Um, so it could log the user in and then do the custom action, and then go to another screen. So obviously you want to work this around the flow of your app so that it's friendly for the user. And then when we um, have our different piece of data, we can have custom behavior on a Darlow. Maybe if they're on iOS, you don't want them to go to a certain page that's designed for Android, etc. Um, so that's all. If you do have any questions, please let me know.